Hello and welcome to PME's Facebook Live for October. It seems like ages since we've seen you and the year has absolutely flown by. Thank you for joining us here from wherever you are in the world, watching whether that's now live or a little bit later on after the show. So who have we got in the team today that's joined us? So first of all, we've got Peter. He's on the camera. He's going to give you a wave. There he goes. Uh, we've got Pat over there with her Stop Go boards. And we've got Pauline and we've also got Carmen down here at the moment and they're kind of an extra pair of hands if we need it. Upstairs on the team we've got Samir, we've got Kieran and we've got Olivia as well. So Pete has already shown you what we're going to be cooking up today. We've got some savoury yummies and we've got some sweet stuff for you as well because we're showing you some bakeware and of course although we're all about the cake that also means some savoury stuff as well. So I'm Paula and I'm going to be showing you what we're going to be getting up to here today. So hopefully a little bit of inspiration and you'll be diving off and, and cooking up a bit of a storm as well. So if we get started then Peter, are you ready to rumble? Always. Jolly good. So we are actually going to be baking as well. So we've got Pauline all kitted out. She said she's got her running shoes on today so that she can go running all the way upstairs and back down again to the oven and uh, present us with what comes out. So you're geared up and ready to roll. That's always good. So we're going to start off uh, last week. We actually had some guests here. So if uh, Veronica's watching, I've pinched your idea of frittata, I'm afraid. And that's what we're going to be looking at today in our tin here. So this is actually our tart tin. And Peter's just going to show you there. We've got some tarts there that we could be using. So whether that's a pastry case that you want to put into there or a sponge, that's the sweet option. But he's already shown you over there some frittata. So basically we're looking at... Um, no pastry in there and something like an omelette. Frittata is normally cooked on the top and then go into the oven, but we're just going to go straight into the oven today with ours. So let's get started then. And in actual fact, uh, when these get cooked up, our ND is actually going to be eating these. So just to liven this up a little bit, I've added in, I've asked first of all, but I've got some of his chilli powder in there. I think there's probably quite a lot of chilli powder in there, but he does like a lot of chilli. So hopefully they'll have a little bit of a kick for him when he bites into these and hopefully he will enjoy them too. So what have we got on our ingredients? Well, we've got six eggs in there that Peter can just show you. Uh, we're going to just whip them up a little bit. We've also got 30 grams of melted butter, which we're going to pop into there as well. Just giving them a little bit of a, a whisk up, adding in a little bit of butter to go in with that as well. Make sure you've got all of that yummy butter out. Very, very lovely. And then I'm going to add some milk into there as well. There we go. So that's actually 250 mils of milk going in. And if you wanted to, you could probably add some cream, etc. I can see Pauline's poised. She's, as always, tidying up after me. So she's uh, keeping me organised, which is brilliant. So just carry on whisking that up a little bit. And I am actually going to add in that lovely chilli powder. I've also got some seasoning in there as well. So I'm just going to pop all of that in. And then I'm going to get ready to add in my other ingredients. So I think Pat's got a shout out. So as she wanders over... I'm just going to run you through what else I've got that I will be putting in to the uh, little tin here. I'm actually going to pinch my jug back as well, Pauline, if I may, because I'm going to pour my mixture into the jug and then I'm going to pour it into the tin. So I've got uh, about three, three to four spring onions chopped up here. I've got three to five rashes of bacon. I think I used five or six in the end because I thought Mr P might like that. And 120 grams of mature cheddar ready to go. So while Pat chats... I'm going to pour my mixture into my jug, I'm going to spray some release into here, and then I'm going to start adding my ingredients in as Pat chats. Does that sound like a plan, Pat? Sounds like a plan. Jolly so, good. Plans um, are good. We're, we're starting in Toronto. Oh, wow, that's uh, so awesome international to start <laughs> it, off it's with. It's amazing, isn't it? And that's from uh, Samar Fikri, who says hi from Ooh, Toronto. I've got the spray. Uh, Fakira Kashif says hello. I'm not quite sure Ooh. where from. And Julie Haig also says hello. And uh, Nero uh, Riaz says hello, hello, and sends you a big smiley face. Hello, hello, back with another big smiley face. <laughs> So I'm just going to start pouring that in. I'm not going to go all the way to the top to start with so that I know that I've got enough mixture uh, for each of my little shapes that are on the go. 
because I can always go back and I can top these back up again. There we go. And I'm going to get the rest of the mixture in as well. Make sure I've got that lovely chilli seasoning in the go with the mixture. There, oh, there it is. Load it. That's going to be very hot and spicy. Now, the good thing about this, and I am going to hand this to Pauline this time and get it right. There we go. Uh, the great thing about this is, although we've got our bacon, our spring onions and our cheese, you can basically put anything in here that you want to. Uh, so you could have it as vegetarian, you could have red peppers in there, you could have mushrooms in there, you could have it as a brunch option, anything like that at all. So I'm just going to use up the rest of the mixture into here and then I'm going to sprinkle. And before I do that, Pat's got another shout out. So let's, uh, let's get that one done as I'm just using up the mixture. So you can see we've got pretty much six out of there, which is excellent. Over to you again, Pauline. Thank you. I'm just going to put my glove on. Okay. So that. first of all, um, a quick update. Julie Hague's from South Yorkshire. Hello. And uh, Anita Patel says that's not enough chilli for Mr P. <laughs> Do I need to put more in Anita? <laughs> quick, somebody get the chilli powder. <laughs> um, and then uh, we have shout outs from Nick Lawrence, who says hi from Australia. Hello. Uh, Sharon Aesop oh, says hi, Sharon. Um, hello from Jem in South oh, Africa. Oh, Hello, good to see you. Okay. And uh, <laughs> Francine Phillips-Ricardo says hi from the Netherlands. Uh, Neryl Johnson uh, from Cape Town, South Africa, and Hi. she gives you a lovely big wave. Oh, that's really lovely. Big waves back to everybody. That's really good. Thank you for being with us. Hopefully you'll all be coming up with your own recipes of this. And don't forget, you can send us some photos of what you've done. But I love this. It's when you're kind of looking at it in the oven, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm just like, oh, I mean, so if you're on a picnic or summer halloween just absolutely great now i pre-cooked my bacon so that i could make sure there wasn't too much fat uh you know going into there like i say you could use anything you wanted to and that kind of is nice and hot when it gets cooked up then and thoroughly heated and all the fat won't come out then into your mixture so if there is any fat you've already got rid of most of that so a bit more bacon on those ones i think so this is actually going to go into the oven, I think it was gas mark four, I told Pauline, for about anywhere between 20 to 30 minutes. It just really depends on your oven um, and how hot it is. We've got an unusual oven, we always think here, because it's actually uh, fan-assisted gas. And we didn't actually know that one of those existed until we saw the one here. That's the first time I'd had gas ovens, fan-assisted electric, but never fan-assisted gas. It is actually a very good oven. Like I say, this is going to look good when these come out, and we will show you these when they come out. And uh, Peter will be homing in on them a bit later on, won't you? Much to your delight, and uh, be able to see what you know, we've cooked up. There we go. And now I don't mind if a little bit of cheese goes out there because that's a nice little bit of crunchiness going on there as well. Oh, you can never have enough cheese going on there. And of course, you can change the cheese that you've got. All yours, Pauline. Time to run. Right. I think we're okay there. Off they go. You'll see them again shortly. Thanks ever so much. Okay, so now we're going to move over this way and we're going to look at baking some little mini donuts. So we've got our tin here ready and as they say in true Blue Peter style, uh, Peter's showing some there, but we've actually got some that we have already been baking. So we're just going to run through how to kind of get the mixture in there or the easiest way to get the mixture in there and in actual fact how to add in a, a little bit of a colour to go through there as well because we're going to be looking at doing a unicorn so to have a little bit of a, a colour going through is quite nice and a little bit of fun. Uh, as you can see if you go low enough you actually find that you don't need to trim them up a little bit but what I'm going to do is use the coloured one and I will give that a little trim so that you can see if you have overfilled them it really doesn't matter at all. So I'm just going to place those back over there. So before I actually prepare the tin, and again I'm going to pop some uh, release into there just to make sure that everything pops out as it needs to, which it always normally does, but there's no harm in just doing that just as a, a bit of a precaution. So for this recipe all we've used is actually, I can see Pat's already getting ready to, to wave a board there. So, I mean, that's not a bad time. All I was going to say is that we've just used an all-in-one Victoria sponge mix for these. And I've actually coloured up some mixture. 
Um, I've used the food colourings, the naturals over here that Peter's probably going to home in on now. So we've got the pink, the blue and the yellow. And I've just popped into three bags, one inside, one extra big bag. And then I'm going to snip the end off and I'm just going to pipe into here. And I've got the same here with chocolate and plain as well. So maybe while I do that, that's a good time for Pat to do her shout out. Do you reckon, Pat, does that sound like a good plan? If that works for you? It does indeed. Okay. So, um, Shamila uh, Omar says hi from Cape Town Hello. in South Africa. And she says, thank you for sharing. It's much appreciated. That's a good pleasure. Um, uh, Sony says hello from Georgia. Hello. Jackie Livingston, Livingston says hello from Ireland. Uh, Nova EJ says hello from the Philippines. Oh, Philippines as well. And uh, Pauline Peter Tapia, yeah. greetings mm. from Peter Delicatessen Cakes in the Netherlands. Oh, wow, hello. And uh, Lali Gowden says hi from South Africa. I think Lali, I may have pronounced that wrong. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it was correct. <laughs> Okay, so we're just gonna push the mix down. I haven't necessarily got enough to do the whole of the tin here, but I'll see how much I have got left. So you can see all my different colors in the different bags just gonna come through. Oh, Peter's nice and close for the uh, mixture so you can see what's happening there. And then I'm just gonna pipe in here and I'm probably just gonna keep going until I kind of think there's enough in there. I'm probably gonna do two rounds. There we go. But again, like I say, not too high. And if it does come up a bit high, we'll just trim that down. So can you get that all okay, Peter? Yeah, I'm fine. You're fine. Peter's always <laughs> fine, aren't you, Peter? Just very chilled guy, aren't you? Hey, just chilled, chilled, chilled. Talking of chilled, that's a very nice breeze on me now. Thank you, Pauline. <laughs> there we go. So that's just those ones going into there. And then I'll just use up the ones that I've got here. So I'm just gonna place both of those into my bag. So that's just the plain one. Plain mix and the chocolate as well. So I'll just push, push that down a little bit. There we go. And the same with that one, just so it doesn't all come squidging back up where we don't want it to. And I'm just gonna drop that one into there because I've already got the bag there and then just give it a push through. Just give that a little cut first of all so I can get it just down to the edge. Get rid of my plastic because we don't want that floating around. So give it a little push and then pop that in. So it's next to our chocolate. Chocolate was a request from Peter, was it not? Yes, it was. Yeah. It was, he wasn't happy that there was no chocolate. So I'm gonna snip the end off there so we're gonna have chocolate and then we'll have a little bit joined of our plain. Hopefully that should be enough then to start filling it. So we'll get the chocolate going through first and then you can just see where the next plain mix is just coming through. So that gives us a nice a nice variation I think there. Does that look appealing? I think it looks quite appealing to be honest. There we go. So like I say we've got the recipe so you can see it and it is just uh, our usual Victoria sponge mix that we like to do all in one. So it is nice and quick and easy to do. So this will just pop into the oven. So gas four for a little bit. And Pauline's gonna be running upstairs again in a second, aren't you Pauline? Yep, she's got those running shoes on. We're making use of them. And maybe, well, probably not too long, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20, not too sure really. We'll see how it goes. Pauline's gonna be keeping an eye don't need to tap too much with those, but they're ready to rumble as well. Thanks, Pauline. Oh, working well. There we go, super okay. duper. So I'm just gonna pop that on there and then that's ready for when our bakey stuff comes out. So now we're gonna look at decorating our little unicorn. So there's our little unicorn there, ready to roll. And if, first of all, we start by preparing our little cake. So like I said, if you've overfilled them, it really doesn't matter. Uh, because you can actually just use a little pair of scissors uh, to cut off those little extra sides and then you can nibble all of those. And in the centre as well, I'll show you another little tip when the other cakes come back down from the oven with Pauline and just an easy way to remove that centre section. You see it just comes away very, very easily. There we are. I think our aircon's starting to blow things around actually. <laughs> 
So there we are. And if I just kind of like grab a mini palette knife, then that will just remove that center bit there. If I just give that a little bit of a, a twist. Can you see that okay, Peter? I just realized I was too busy watching what I was doing and ignoring you. Pat's got a little shout out. So while I start to just prepare my little donut, there we go, with a bit of piping gel ready for the sugar paste. Pat can do a okay. shout out for you. Uh, okay. First of all, just to let you know that Kieran is posting the recipes. Oh, thanks Kieran, that's lovely. So that should keep everybody on track. Great stuff. And there I just you got go. a couple for you. First of all, uh, Martha Vella says love it and hello from Austin in Texas, hello. USA. And Patricia Loma Para says hola from Bolivia. Hola. <laughs> that's lovely. So all I'm going to do is add a little bit of piping gel. So you could actually use uh, your favourite jam or something like that. But I haven't got any jam, so I'm just using my piping gel just to, to add a bit of sticky on to my little cake. So uh, again, if you need to, just brush your crumbs off there uh, with your pastry brush. I've got clean hands because obviously I've been cooking and getting ready to use ingredients. So I'm just going to use my hands there. So just along the, the bottom edge there. And that's the uh, piping gel. So again, maybe pop that into a bowl would be good. So you're kind of not reusing the piping gel with the brush you're using, which would make life easier for you. So if you're having to kind of maybe throw that away if you get any bits in it. There we go, so that's ready. So I'm just gonna place that there for a little minute. And I'll keep my brush to one side in case I need that again. So I'm going to leave that to sit there for a few minutes so it starts to go a little bit less tacky. And first of all, I'm just going to show you uh, how to sort out the little unicorn horn. So that's with the poppet and you can see that just in front of you here. So it's really exciting this, I love this. It is so fun to work with. Sorry Peter, I've moved it out of the way. <laughs> So you can either use it as one section, which is this one, which just gives you a flat 2D little unicorn horn, or you could use it for, for other things, for example, um, a swordfish or a narwhal, something like that that's just over here. And if you then decided you wanted to use it in the full section, that's where you bring in the second half and use it to make a, a three-dimensional little unicorn horn or little horn, whatever you're going to be using that for. So I'm just going to run through how to use that. And then we've got what we've used for the ears. Or again, we've actually used them as some fins just further down here. Or with our little bumblebee, we actually use them as the little wings either side, which I think actually worked really well, to be honest. They look quite convincing as bumblebee wings on that particular donut. So let's start off by just rolling out some gum paste a little bit. Here we go. So I've got my little pad as well, so it's got a little bit of plastic on the top, just so that it stops this from damaging where I'm kind of pushing in over the top there. And our little handle on the back, so that will just slot in to there. And I can turn it round so it's actually facing you. And I'm using some gum paste for this. So just gonna knead it up, roll it into a little bit of a, an oblong sausage. I'm just gonna lay that down into that section there. Just going to use my rolling pin and just roll away towards Peter. There we go, heading towards your Peter and then back to myself as well. So you can see that that's got rid of all the excess paste around it. So we can just then remove all of that like so. And then we can use a scriber tool just to remove that straight out from there. And that gives you that lovely single 2D effect horn. So Pat's got a, a question. I think she's holding up that relevant board. They've come in so handy. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of things, Paula. First of all, um, uh, Kieran tells me the recipes will be posted after. Oh, okay. So that's um, after Kieran says. So if you're expecting the recipes, I'm talking through them as we go. Yeah. But if you're kind of thinking, oh, where are they? Kieran's doing that at the end. Remember. So, okay. Thank but you. the question Thanks, that Kieran. we have. Is what is gum paste and why are you using gum paste? Okay. Well, gum, ba gum paste, get my teeth in, is basically uh, a strengthened paste that's a lot, lot firmer, that you can stretch a lot more, roll a lot thinner, will dry a lot 
lot faster and you can do a lot more with it to be honest that if you were kind of maybe working in sugar paste trying to do this you'd find that it would actually go quite floppy if you were trying to kind of have that dried in time and looking good so it's basically just got a gum added into it so that you can do a lot more with it um, and in this case uh, that's what I'm using in here you can use your sugar paste in here or maybe a modeling paste but you'll just find that maybe it's a little bit harder to take it out or that maybe it won't be quite as sturdy for example on that narwhal that Peter was showing you here I actually just used sugar paste for these because I knew I didn't have to worry about that being strengthened because it was going to be laying on the donut and underneath here as well so I actually used sugar paste uh, with the ear so that they could be fins so in that respect it, it doesn't matter but that's why I'm using a, a strengthened paste for this bit here now so I've rolled my paste up given it a knead and I'm just going into a sausage shape now and then I'm going to lay that into our little section there and then I'm going to take the top one and you can see there's little handles here and they will just fit neatly into those other four little handles that are there so I'm just going to turn it round to the side and I'm just going to line them up and give that a little push until they meet together give that a little push 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 there we go and if I take that out you'll be able to see hopefully quite neatly as I give that a squeeze all that excess paste that's come out from there Yep, so you can see that quite well, I think. And then if we open that out, you should be able to see where we've got that little horn started. So what I'm gonna do is just pull that away, the excess paste, and then pop it back in, give it another squeeze, and make sure that we've got rid of all the excess paste that we need to. So it's not a bad idea to kind of weigh up how much you need paste-wise before you go. But again, if you need to, you can just very easily pop it back in, no pun intended, give it another squeeze, and you can see quite easily that if there is any excess, it just comes out. And as always, they line up really well, those little pegs, so that you always know where you actually need to be. So just open them out. Pat's got another question. So as you can see, I've got the excess there. So while I remove that, Pat's just gonna wander over with another little question for everybody. I, I think one or two people are still looking for clarification on this paste, Paula. Oh, righty ho then, Pat. Because um, Kaylee Taylor asks, can you use 50-50 of flour paste and fondant? And I think Yes, and that gives you your, your modelling paste if you do that. So, And you can if that's what you want to do. Um, there's no reason why not. Um, it's just not as firm. So it'll have a slightly slower drying time when you come to work on it but that's absolutely fine if if that's what you want but like I say you won't be able to have it dry as quickly maybe not as firmly so really and truly it's up to you what you've got available and what you're actually aiming to do with it as well so I'm just going to give that a little twist round just to thin that down so that we've got it as it needs to be I could spend quite a lot of time just tidying up but I'm not going to and that just gives us our little dip to. So then, is that all right to think, Pat, clarification wise for everybody? Or does anybody need any more info, do you know? I, I think probably the um, confusion comes between the terminology oh, of, of flour paste, paste and gum, gum paste, paste, sugar paste, paste and fondant. Flour. And that's, that's where it does get confusing because different parts of the world call the same thing a different name so gum paste is basically the same as flour paste it's just a paste that's had uh, gum added into it that's ideal for maybe creating flowers with so you can do much finer work with it roll much thinner and it will hold its shape much much better so uh, if you were looking to make a 50 50 and you were then looking to add in some gum paste with sugar paste or fondant to make that modeling paste the sugar paste or the rolled fondant they're basically the same thing so some areas in the world will call sugar paste sugar paste other people will call it rolled fondant but basically it's a fondant that you can roll out that's very soft that's ideal for actually coating with so you probably wouldn't choose for example to coat your cake in a, a flour paste or a gum paste because it has a lot of gum in it it will dry really hard and of course, if you're going to try and cut into that neat into it, it wouldn't be the best thing. So that's why you use a much softer paste to be able to coat your cake with, whether that's 
rolled fondant or sugar paste. So hopefully that, that kind of helps a little bit. But if it doesn't, keep asking the questions until we've kind of got you where you're feeling you can understand the terminology. I think more and more these days, anything tends to go, to be honest. So we'll have a little uh, carry on there. Uh, oh, Pat's got a shout out. Sorry, I was looking over her thinking she was um, going to be coming up, but she's got a shout out. So what I'm going to now do is while Pat's doing the shout out, I'm just going to now do some ears. I'll wait till you've done the ears. Oh, okay. Pat's going to wait till I've done the ears. So I've popped my little ear into the, the middle section there, and I've got some gum paste again, and I've got a little bit of cracking on the top, but that comes up on the top. Keep your nice smooth area to the bottom, pop your paste over the top there, and then you're just rolling away again. So one way towards Peter, and then back to myself again. And then we can just remove your excess paste and that gives you your little ear. Now you can keep your ear flat if that's what you choose to do. Just scribe a tool to lift it out. Or you can give it a little pinch if that's what you want to do. And that's your, your little ear just there. So I'm just going to give it a little pinch to give it a little bit of uh, movement. So I've got one there that's dried that you can see has got a little pinch in it. So again, it just kind of gives it a little bit of shape. And if you want to, you can actually then give that a little paint as well, which are our ears. So what I've actually got are two that are already dried so that they're ready to go when we come along to actually spraying them with a little bit of luster in a minute. So I'm gonna coat our donut as well with that paste because that should be nice and uh, not too sticky now and ready to be able to coat with our sugar paste or rolled fondant, depending on which part of the world you're actually in and what terminology you might be familiar with. So as you can see, it's uh, much softer than the gum paste that we've just been using. And if I grab this out, you can have a, a little look. You can kind of see it's much, much firmer. And if we want to roll it really, really fine and really, really thin, then we can do. So if I squash that down, roll towards Peter again you can see how thin that can actually roll out so that's really really thin and really really fine and that could very easily if I pop it over there you'll be able to see across my favorite path base how fine and how thin that can actually go but if we leave that to one side you'll be able to see that by the end that will have dried quite a bit and it will be very firm in a very short space of time. So if I leave that up there, don't let me forget, Peter. No pressure on you to remember. I am expecting you to remember, to remind me. And then we're gonna look at the fondant that we've got over here, rolled fondant sugar paste, which is already rolled out and ready to go. So you can see it's much, much softer, and I haven't rolled that out particularly finely because it is for coating my donut. And I'm just gonna place a little bit of icing sugar just underneath that, so that I can then cut out with a large circle, and I'm gonna drop that over my donut. So Pat's got another question over there. So while I'm just progressing with that, I think she's gonna wander over. There we go. Okay, um, Anne Kitts asks, how long does the fondant take to dry? Well, if you were to leave it out, you'd find it would begin to crust fairly quickly. But at the same time, what I've also done is we've now just put a little bit of fondant next to our gum paste that we've rolled out. So what you might find is that if you left it overnight, you'd have a nice, fairly firm coating on that. However, if I kind of leave it sitting out there, go back to it in 20 minutes, I'd still be able to scrunch it up and probably reuse it, re-roll it, uh, but not that we'd ever recommend that you do that. So it does stay a lot softer for longer, and the reason for that is so, so that you can get the coating on your cake and you can get a really nice finish on it so that it hasn't started to crust and dry before you're ready for that to happen. Um, it will take a long time for it to go very, very hard, which is why it's ideal for eating and why it's used for coating, so, so that you can still bite into it without breaking a tooth as you do so. So hopefully that, that should help. But I have left that there, along with the gum paste, so by the time we've finished, you'll be able to see if it started to, to crust, how much it started to crust, and if I can still scrunch it up compared to 
our gum paste which is just sitting next to it and I think Peter's just showing that to you there now. Okay, so we're just going to uh, coat our little coloured donut ready and I'm just going to into the middle, just going to make a, a little bit of a mark so that I can just take the centre out so that I know where my middle actually is. And I've just got a little plunger cutter that I'm going to use just to take that centre bit out. There we go. How's the baking going, Pauline? Oh, the donuts are out already. Goodness me, well, that was quick. There we go. So while we're doing that, I'm going to abandon that over there. So Peter's over here with you. So you can see we haven't got them risen too much here, which is ideal. That's just what we need. So we've got nice, clean centres. And if I just pull that one out there, you'll be able to see that that looks really kind of nice. I'm going to chop this one in half. Well, it's lovely and fluffy as well. So we can kind of see inside there that lovely coloured different mix that we've got there. They've come up really nice, the colours in there. That's lovely. So I'm going to leave that over here, actually, so that if Peter needs to have another little look inside, we can do. Shall we have a little look inside here as well? The chocolatey one. There we go. Oh yeah, that looks nice as well, look. There we go. So we can see how they've turned out. Okay, so I'm just gonna place over our donut. There we go. Just pull that down around the edge. Just gonna flip it over and pull that round. There we go, and then we can trim that up if we need to, just around the bottom. There we are. So much, much softer to work with. Very pliable so that you can kind of coat that as you need to. And then just trim, trim away around the outside. So I'm just going to use a, a mini palette knife to do that. I mean, you don't have to trim around the edge if you don't want to. I'm just doing that to, to give a nice, neat finish around the bottom of our donut. There we go. There we are. And like so. There we go, so just flip that back the right way round. Now for that centre, if you want to be able to kind of thin that down a little bit so it hits the donut, you just need to use a, a nice nice brush into the middle and then just ease that open and that will just kind of open out the paste against the donut to give you a, a nice finish. There we go, and just, there we go. If you need to do a bit more, you can do. So that just opens that out quite nicely for us. And then we're ready to do a little bit of decorating. So you can either do that now with um, a pen, edible pen, so that you can paint some eyelashes and little eyebrows onto there. Or you can actually use uh, some paint if you want to and a little fine paintbrush to be able to do that. So I've actually got some black food colouring. Um, I've got our PME Black, which is a nice one to use to be able to paint directly onto what will be our little unicorn ready for us. So I'm just going to pop it straight onto the top there. I can just dab into that as I need to. There we are. And that way Peter can see exactly what we've got. Try and keep my tools out of that. There we go. And then I can just filter that in and take off the, the excess that I don't want. And we're just going to paint um, an eyelash and eyebrows. So a little flick don't want too much on there. So then I'm going to turn it the other way round so that I can look at doing the same thing, hopefully, over this side. And then we can add in a couple of eyelashes if we want to, just coming off the edge. There we go. Like I say, if you want to use an um, edible pen, then you can do that as well. Just depends how fine you want everything to look. There we go, so just those ones just across there. So that's drying then while we can look at some lustre spray onto the little horn. I've actually got one that I've started already. Um, so I'll just spray a little bit more over that, ready. And then we can add some piping in as well. But you'll be able to see, you don't have to do uh, the whole thing if you don't want to. You can add a little bit of a, a subtle hint to it as well it's going to roll away right sorry Peter if I get you with this I don't mean to so you could actually do it so it's two-tone with just a little bit on there or you can go a little bit more so that you get a full effect I think Pauline's off to check the rest of the baking now as she's going along there 
we go. So we can build that up if we need to in a little while. So I'm not going to put any more on there because I'll go and handle it and it'll all come back off. So I can come back to those if I need to. What I can also do is to be able to paint into our little ears. I can just spray straight into the lid if I want to so that I can then, I'm just going to pinch this lid, so that I can then paint with my brush as well. Oh, okay, so Pat's just saying there are loads of shout outs, so that's probably... Okay, right here. So I'll just carry on for a little bit. So there we go, we're gonna just do a little bit of painting into here at the moment so we can use any of those so you can see into there peter yep you got that jolly good there we go and i'm just going to paint into that inside section there we go and again you can go over that if you need to now if you leave it to dry just a little bit it will thicken up in there so if you'd rather have it a little bit thicker just give it a couple of minutes just to be able to thicken up so it's a little bit of a denser colour or you can just go back over that a little bit later on if that's what you choose to do. So I'm not going to go over it for too much because then we can just put that straight into our little unicorn when she's sorted. So then we're going to pipe using some different colours just like we did on the inside so, so that the outside is matching as far as that's concerned and we've got with our bags inside together we've actually got the yellow the pink and the blue chopped the ends off those and just placed it into a larger bag so it all fits really well uh, just with a, a tube i think it's a 22 that's on the end there and then we're just going to squeeze out so that we've got a little bit of a, a main design in some nice colors as we're going so i'm just going to give it a little squeeze so as i can get that going so we can see the colors coming through which look really good then we're just going to add that onto our unicorn so we can give a little bit of a kink as we go. We'll add the ears in and then we can add in a little bit more of our mane or forelock as we go. Oh, I think the frittatas are down already as well. Oh, that's really good. Oh, look at those. They're looking lovely, aren't they? Oh, I can see the chilli. Delicious. <laughs> Did you nibble those as you came down, Pauline? <laughs> but you wanted to. <laughs> so I'm just going to add the little ears in, like so. And then I'm just going to pop the little unicorn horn just in there as well. There we go. And then I'm just going to pipe behind it so that, that doesn't fall down, so that it's just got a little bit of support at the back. There we go. And we can add in another little bit. There we go. And one up front as well. There we go. So that's her little face all ready to go with those. And I don't know if Peter just wants to hop over just to have a look at these yummy things that have just hopped out of the oven. So everything's a little bit hot at the minute, but they look really lovely, don't they? They do look really, really yummy. So we just need to turn those out. I'm going to give them a couple of minutes to cool, I think, because that is quite hot, uh, so that I don't burn myself, obviously, because I don't want to do that. And we're going to actually move along so that we can start looking at the rhumbarbas, which Peter was showing you earlier. So I think Pat's got uh, a question over there as well, so we can catch up. And then I'm going to start uh, mixing up, so it's going to get noisy for actually, a little bit. Actually, before you move on. OK, okay. Pat. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've got a, a question from um, Gull, wants to know what nozzle you've used for the piping. Oh, that was number 22, it's a gem 22. Okay. Gem 22. And also Peter in a moment um, uh, um, has also asked if she can have a closer look at the other donuts. Oh, okie dokie, okay. that sounds like a good idea then. And then once you've got that up and running, I'll do the shout outs. Okay, that sounds like a good idea then. So what shall we do first? Show off those donuts or start with the mixing? So all I'm just gonna talk while you're doing the donuts. I'm only putting two eggs in at the moment, which is part of the recipe. And then Peter's just showing you off what's there. So I can talk you through the rest of the recipe as he very slowly just focuses on those donuts. 
So we've got two eggs that I'm going to beat that are going into there. And I'm going to add in two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm going to mix that together. Then I'm going to add in some cream and continue to beat that just for a little while. Then I'm going to add in my sugar. And then I'm going to fold in my flour when it comes to it. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea. And again, that recipe is going to be posted at the end. Kieran's going to do all of those at the end. I've got double cream going in here as well. So that's um, 150 mils of that that will be going in. So you're all right then, Peter? Okie dokie, I'm just going to start some noise now, everybody. So here we go. So we're just going to beat the eggs up a little bit. There you go. Can you see it now? Okay. Can't hear you, Peter. So you can see it's kind of a bit thicker now, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lot thicker. There you go, you see? And then I'm just going to fold in my flour. And I know I've got my spoon there ready. And I'm just going to remove that because I've remembered to, because I can see that's dripping. And that towards Pauline. There we go. You weren't supposed to follow me then, Peter. I thought you'd just focus on the inside of the bowl or something like that. So I'll just do half of it to start with because I just fold it in because you don't want it to uh, lose that lovely whisked up air that's in there at the moment. 
and with the vanilla bean paste you're going to have some very lovely um nice little bits going through there as well i've just realized you're going to do some shout outs weren't yeah, you I've, I've got <laughs> sorry i've forgotten all about pat again this happens a lot can you go can for I, it while you're folding yeah, you go for yes. it pat. Um, so, um, as they say, in no particular order. Okay, sorry. But first of all, um, um, Gull said wow when she saw the uh, the donuts. Oh, did you like good? Um, and Maggie Lamb said how cute. Oh, hello, Maggie. Uh, Deborah Fulcher says hi, girls, love you. Oh, um, we love you too. <laughs> Rose Thomas says hi from Dubai. Hello. Um, Fatima Dos Santos says loving it. Good. And then hold on, let me go back. Um, a special one from Alice Torta, um, Hello. and um, this is actually about the daughter of the owners of Alice oh. Torta. Um, they're one of our distributors, and it's a special hello from Lizzie. She's watching PME instead of doing her homework. That's just naughty, isn't it? <laughs> but I bet this is a lot more fun than doing homework. I don't know what homework it was. But yeah, definitely. Okay, can I keep going? You can keep going, Pat. All I wanted to say was that don't forget that there's no yeast in this recipe. It is yeast free, so it's nice and simple. But yes, you go for it, Pat. You keep going. Okay. Um, Anna Hernandez says hello from Ecuador. Ecuador, what marvelous and sweet ideas. You need to remember some of these did come in a little while back. Okay, sorry, that is <laughs> my fault. I forgot. Um, Anka Swampol says hello from South Africa. Um, and Kelly, uh, Scottish, Scottish Heart says, Happy October from Brighton. We caught, got caught by this one before, Ontario in Canada. Ah, oh, not Brighton, UK. Yes. Uh, Candice Gordon-Lucas says, Hi from Cape Town in South oh. Africa. Helga Howarth says, Hello from Australia. Oh, wow. Um, and um, where are we? Um, uh, Ida Alcina says, Hola. Uh, Nadia hello. Khan says loving it. Shirley Kwan says hello. Paula hello, from Hong Kong. Another approved teacher. Um, Yvonne O'Neill says hi, oh, Paula. Yvonne, hello. And it shows you how far back this was because Sharon Jessup says mmm chocolate. Oh yes. <laughs> so sorry that was my fault. Um, yeah, I know Pat said there were loads, wasn't there? And then I just got sidetracked and forgot all about it. Thanks, Pauline, for that. She's grabbing those off me again so i've put this in a nice big bag i popped it in a glass because i just find that so much easier to be honest and then i'm just going to snip the end off and pipe into it now i'm actually only going to pipe to start with probably just up to that very first line that you can see that peter's just showing you now hopefully you'll be able to see it just into there so that i haven't got too much mixture in there i'm looking for my scissors which i've been I had them earlier, I know, and then I put them down again. So I'll just, not too big a hole, so that I can quite easily then control what I've got going in. And I've just dropped a little bit of the blue in there. There we go, got rid of that. So there we go. And then we can just come back round if we need to with the mixture. Same thing round again. And I must tip out the frittatas. Really, we should have Mr P down here to test them, shouldn't we? Don't all rush in at once. <laughs> is he watching? Is he is he waiting for these to be cut into so he can try them? We do. We need him down here for a little bit of a, a taste session. Although he might not like it from what Anita was saying. <laughs> not enough of the chilli in there for him. But yeah, this is such an easy, quick recipe to do because I think you think of rum barbers and you think, oh, that's really, really complicated and you've got to wait and there's yeast involved. But these work really, really well. There's nothing to worry about. And like I say, they come out a lovely golden colour. We're going to go through the syrup with you as well. These won't take long to bake. So by the time these are baked, we'll have the syrup done, the cream done, job sorted, sauce on rum barbers and looking hopefully very yummy and very lovely and there we go and just a quick squeeze around there i don't want to put too much in i have to admit but i know when i was doing it before i thought i overfilled them but to be honest um i actually think we could go around a little tiny bit more just to use the the mixture up a little bit and it will just sit back down into itself anyway so we're not too bothered there we go 
and if there's a bit extra in there, well, that's just extra for the sauce to go into, which is great. And we're not going to argue about that, I don't think. We're just going to eat it all. Pauline is poised and ready. I don't want to keep her waiting any longer. All over to yourself, Pauline. There we go. Lovely. So not very long there, just probably about 12 to, to 15 minutes there on a 180. So now we're over to the bit that always makes me very nervous, which is the sauce, because I have to light our little utensil here. But that's okay. So I'm just going to get this lit. So start the lighter first of all. Oh, I'm nervous. Oh, I've nearly burnt my thumb. There we go. I'm going to go again. Hang on a second. I know why it didn't work. Unlock. Helps if you actually switch the gas on first of all. <laughs> so I didn't do that. There we go. There we go. That's it. <laughs> nervous bit out of the way for me. But yes, it is good if you actually do attempt to put the gas on. So I've got my sugar just over here. So you can see Peter's just showing you. I'm going to add in some water into that. So that's 85 mils of water. Now with this sauce, you can either add in the same amount also of rum, or you can put your flavouring in there, or you might want to put something like um, a juice in there instead to make it really tasty. So you've got the options there to be able to do it. And I'm just going to turn it up a little bit so that we can then get it on the go a little bit quicker. There we are. So I'm just going to cook this now, bubble it up until the sugar melts. Then I'm going to add in the rum that we've got here. Like I say, you can use your flavouring, anything like that at all. So then we've got a, a shout out from Pat. And while Pat's doing the shout outs and Peter's looking at the pan, I'm going to swap in my other mixing bowl ready for the cream. There okay, you go. Paula. Righty-ho, Pat. So um, here we are. Uh, first of all, Coralyn Hammond says she's stunned by your art. I make fondant cakes oh, also, so. nothing like yours, but I do enjoy it. Oh, I'm sure you're being very modest. And that's from um, Hendersonville. Um, I think the important thing is to enjoy it. Well, yeah, and at the end of the day, you've got to enjoy stuff. And I think if you enjoy it, it just comes out, doesn't it? And, and the, the great joy of today is if no matter what you get to enjoy eating it isn't it that's the fun oh, bit oh yes it's all about the eating <laughs> not that we're going to be eating anything of course you know we would never do that <laughs> so um a couple more for you uh yep is a pica ortego lorena says hello from mexico and Ooh. thanks for teaching us oh, hello. Pleasure. and um irene carly says hello from the usa and um We've had a lot of questions about the donuts, Ooh. so maybe you could go back and actually um, decorate another one for yeah, us when yeah. you've done this. Yeah, we could maybe do the narwhal because that's got the uh, the little poppet horn thing again. So yeah, we could do that one. Yeah, sounds good. Wonderful, thank Super you. Duper. Is that right for doing a sauce and a cream first? Yes, like, is that, that okay? First. Jolly good. So that's just starting to bubble now, so that's dissolving which is great, that's what we need to happen there. So I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a stir. I don't want it to crystallize, I just want it melted. So I haven't worried about a temperature gauge going into there or anything. So I actually put 180 of sugar in there, just in case you're wondering. And I think that's probably enough. Just gonna take it off the heat. Sorry, people, I've just realized I'm making you kind of wander around there. So that's fine, that's melted, that's plenty. So I'm gonna switch my gas off so I'm safe. And then I'm just going to add in my rum into that. There we go, which is lovely. And then I'm going to leave that on there a little bit. Because by the time that that's kind of ready to go, we'll find that it will have thickened up a little bit because it bubbled. And then by that time, Pauline's probably going to be rushing down with a few more bits and pieces as we go. Um, I'm just going to do the cream first of all, so here we go. So I've actually got that written on there for myself. So I've got 200 mils of double cream again. There you go. And I'm just going to pop that in. There we go. Because, like I say, and it is double cream, so it's kind of got a little bit of a skin started on there. I'm going to tip all of that out because that's lovely. That's the yummy bit. Oh, that's nice. There we go. I think that could be where I put it in the fridge earlier, and it was. Um, too near the cold bit and I've got 85 grams of icing sugar so that's going to go 
into there as well. So this is the Chantilly cream and we're just going to mix those two in together. And I'm also going to pop in what will be a teaspoon of vanilla as well. So again, I'm just going to gauge that though as we go. Yeah, oh no, that's fine. Yeah, we've still got to do our cream, so we're, we're kind of getting there. So I'm just going to put a bit more in because I like to be able to see the little bits through the cream as we go. There we go. And if I'm just going to drop that in. And while that's mixing, I was just going to talk you through uh, what we've actually got. This doesn't take too long. Well. So there we go. So Peter can kind of watch that. Oh, we've got a question at the same time. It's all happening here at PME. <laughs> Oh, yes, I've stopped because I couldn't hear very well. Uh, it's PME, as you can see. Peter's just going to show you that now. Uh, different gauges on there, one, two, three, four, five. Very, very easy to use, and I love it because you can put it on really fast, and you can pretend to scare people, and you can just lift it up, and it automatically stops. So even if I want to pretend that I'm going to scare Peter and splash him with everything, it's not going to work. No, but it is, it is great to work with, I have to admit. And I'm not going to over mix my cream because then that will go too far. So I'm just going to do enough to get it where it needs to actually be. It doesn't take very long. It is a very nice whisk action on this, to be honest. Rotary Planet action, of course. I'm just going to give that a little scrape round. Make sure that it is all okay. Probably give it a little bit longer, but not too much longer. There we go. Do you want to taste, Peter? Okay, thanks. <laughs> oh dear. As long as you're not saying you don't like my cooking, that's the main thing. Now something we're actually going to do when we put our rum barbers in their cases, or we're going to put the rum barbers in the cases, and so we've got ready here just some ordinary white little cases and we're going to stretch these out a little tiny bit just so that the rum barbers can sit into the cases. And I'm actually going to decorate them up with some little different bits and pieces. And what we're actually going to do is maybe spray a little bit of lustre onto those as well at the same time. I've also got, everything's blowing away, a selection of different bits and pieces as well. So if I just run you through what we've actually got here. Um, I've got some flakes as well. So if you want to use a flake to decorate your rum barbers with, you can do. Uh, I've got some very nice uh, cigarellos, just little ones, so that I can add those into there. And I've also got some little... Um, nuggets there some golden gourmet sprinkles and some coffee beans as well but i've also got some lemon rinds that i'm just going to place through there um, and when i put them together i'm just going to put a slice of lemon on there just before they're served as well so if you really kind of want to put maybe something different in through with the cream as well to give it a different flavor apart from the vanilla then you know again feel free to do so because it just gives it your special twist on everything so it always looks really good i do need to just check how um, our sauce is just over here as well so that's just thickening up and what we'll actually be doing is pouring some over the barbers give them a little bit to settle in and soak up all that lovely flavor and then we can put the rest on. I'm also going to be adding in a little bit of um, piping gel that we were using earlier on the donut before. Uh, but you could be using your favourite jam just to glaze over the top or maybe an apricot glaze just to seal in everything with it as well. So I'm just going to pour that in to there so that we've got that ready for when they come down. So they are just still cooking at the moment. Um, I have got everything bagged up ready so I don't have to use this one here. But I'm just going to move down there in a minute. But just to let you know that the tube, in case I forget to tell you when we come to pipe, is actually a 1M that's in there. And just to help Peter, because that's the sort of person I am, I've just popped that there so he can kind of focus on that 
while I just pop down to here. And this is the bit Peter didn't really want to do. He's running up and down here, aren't you? So I'm just going to turn these out now. I've probably actually left them a little bit too long. And I'm just going to use a, a baking tray just to be able to get hold of those. Just going to slightly angle it and give them a little flip over and round. There we go. That's just so, so I don't squash them as they hopefully tip out. Oh, yeah, just one that didn't. That's not bad. And that's probably just because I left it for so long. Oh, look at those. They look so yummy. I'm just going to flip these over. Oh, look at those. Aren't they great? Oh, these look really good. I think we should cut into one, actually, to be honest. Oh, look at those. Aren't they yummy? But you can just imagine them. Uh, maybe at New Year or something, when that comes around, you've got a little party on the go. These are really easy to, to work with. So I'm just going to cut into this one here and just see how that is inside. There we go. Oh, lovely. There's the spring onion and everything in there. Very, very yummy and tasty. I like that. That looks good. So what I'm going to do, uh, while we're just waiting for those to come down now, uh, Pat's got some shout outs, but I'm just going to start getting ready with the, um, the other ones, the other little donut things as well. And I think what's happened is I've probably put too much mixture into those tins. You know, I put that extra mixture in. Well, and I said you probably didn't need to. Well, I didn't need to. And it's gone everywhere. So I think poor old Pauline's a bit bothered. She's come down here to tell me that they've gone everywhere. So I've actually got some that we'd baked already. So I'm going to swap over to those. So just remember, you don't need to use all of your mixture, just like I said and just err on the side of caution. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a feast a little bit later on, we're gonna eat all of the rhubarber sponge. But this is what happens because this way you know we're working live and it's as it is. And these things happen sometimes. So hey ho, life carries on as they say. So and this is why we always have some prepared and ready and here they are. So what we'll do is we'll just quickly finish off with our rhubarbers placing them into our little cases. Thanks, Pauline, though. She's been, she's been a little star, hasn't she? Running up and down with, with her running shoes. Oh, whoops. The air con's on as well, so it's blowing everything away. So what I'm gonna do is just leave out one of these. So there we go. So they do give you this lovely little golden color. And I'm just gonna grab myself another casing because they all fell around everywhere. There we go. So we'll just stretch, stretch it out a little bit so we can just place our little barbers on there. Now is it easier, Peter, if I maybe place them that side for you and I can pour sauce all over them? Does that work for you? Or actually, do you know what I might do is just move this out the way. Now we've got the opportunity to. Okay. That'd be easier. Just thinking of you. The question is we're just going to decorate these little rum barbers before we move on. Actually, it relates to the frittata. So maybe oh, okay, lovely. So I'm just going to pour for you, now. You pour. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. These are one oh, of my favourites. Oh, no. I'm just going to give it a couple of ticks. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the question as far as the frittata is concerned, mm. um, uh, uh, Lally Gooden um, has asked whether they can be frozen. Well, I don't see why not. I have to admit, I haven't frozen these. Um, but... The, yeah, because we're going to eat them. <laughs> but yeah, they should freeze absolutely fine, to be honest. I'd say always double check with whatever recipe you've done, um, just in case there's something in there that isn't great to freeze. Um, but certainly this is something that I would make and freeze ahead so that I could, I could bring this out and then just kind of like serve it cold when we kind of picnicked or something like that, perhaps. Great on a barbecue day, actually, as well, to be honest, I think. So I could keep pouring sauce into there forever, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is just quickly add the cream in over the top. Should probably leave it just a little bit to set. But like I say, just a little bit of glazing over the top. So that could be your apricot glaze warmed up. Uh, that just helps seal it in. So you can just brush, brush that in. Thanks, Peter. He's just kind of manoeuvring the different pieces over. So just a little bit of glaze sealant on there. And I'm just going to speed it up a little bit. There we go. And then just into the centre with the cream and around, just to give us plenty, oh, bit of air in there, not to worry. And then we can fill those into the middle and then come back round. There we go. 
that is going to be very very yummy i think in there so just that one m tube and then some decorations so we can pop some of those in and i think i might add a little bit of spray on there a bit of rose gold so watch out peter this is headed your way there we go don't know how this is going to look this is just an impromptu oh yeah there we go how does that look from your end does that look all right oh oh in that case god dear i don't know is that better yeah, you're right, actually, you couldn't see, could you? It was me pretending to be mean. There we go, just pop that in. And a nice little bit of long flake. We can just kind of chop that up a little bit. And then we can kind of put a little shard in there if we want to. Yep, there we go. Chop it up a bit more. There we go, so we can just have some flake strands in there. A little bit of gold if we want to, just onto there. Coffee beans as well. So, question, but while Peter's doing that, I'm just moving down here so that we can just carry on with our other donuts and so get prepared for If I could just that. ask a question before you get too far into your donut. Yep, you go for um, that. And I'm just going to start um, rolling out for our nard. Uh, and basically, what exactly is the glaze? Uh, the glaze that I've just put on was piping gel. Um, and that's basically uh, a clear jelly that Peter has probably got the ability to show you if I move it in. Uh, so that's our piping jelly just in there, which is just a clear clear jelly that we tend to use for either as an extra strong glue uh, or sometimes to coat on underneath a cake. Uh, it's what I've used for the donut as well. It hasn't got any flavour to it, but it is just clear. And it takes a little longer to dry, but it's great for water effects. You can colour it up as well. You can pipe with it. There really is an awful lot that you can do with piping gel. Uh, so we tend to use it quite a lot. If I'm working in candy, I do tend to, to use piping gel quite a bit. So I've just rolled that out. Pat's got some shout outs. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna coat my donut. So I'm using that with that nice soft fondant. And just in between times, I'm just gonna bring these in so that you can kind of see how that's drying. That's the gum paste and this is at the moment you can see the sugar paste and how that's drying so i'm just going to leave those there so pat's okay. going to carry on with the shell tops right you go so um go. Uh, sonia williams says hi from st lucia i'm always Hello. interested in learning new tricks oh, yes. and uh zemi bertino says hi and um she gives you a lovely big wave lovely big wave back thank you <laughs> and very there much. was a question earlier from Neil at Gem in South Africa, oh, hi, who, Neil. who had wanted to know how you stuck the sugar paste to the donut. Oh, so that's very apt. So you're right there now. That's perfect. So what I did, Neil, was I used that piping gel, which I'm just gonna move back in again, uh, just to coat the edge. I mean, you can use ordinary jam if you want to, because it's nice and sticky the same way. But if you didn't want any colour on there or you, you didn't want, you know, any flavour off this, if you don't want it to ruin the cake sponge, uh, then this is ideal. And it lasts really well. It's just a fantastic little glue. Helps keep everything nice and moist as well, which is why we've used it on our rum barbers over there as a glaze. There we are. So just all the way round the outside of the doughy. And we're just going to drop that over the top of our donut. There we are. So I just push that around. So I just used a, a circle cutter just to give me my sizing so that I haven't got too much paste over there. And I'm just gonna flip it over so I could have that on parchment if I wanted to. And just use my palette knife again just to trim that down a little bit, my little mini one. I think I used it earlier somewhere. So I'm just gonna use this one I think I used it um, when I was, I don't know, lifting something out, I think, I'm not sure. There we go, so just trimming that round. So you have to excuse the palette knife, which looks quite big, just trimming that round. Like I say, you don't have to, you can just curl it under the donut and job done, hey presto. But it just neatens everything up a little bit for you. So smooth that back round on the surface, just rubbing that round a little bit so that looks nice and then just a paintbrush into the middle which is what we did before just to widen that little hole so that you can kind of see what you might want to do is just coat right over the top you might not want to put the hole in the middle you don't have to 
if you don't want to. It's entirely up to you what you choose to do. So then I'm just going to use some of my leftover sugar paste and I'm actually going to use that to create these little bits here. What I might do is, Peter, is it alright if I lift it and swap it in over here so it's, it's right next to us, is that okay? And we've just got a question from Pat as well. There we go. It's a busy day. It is busy and this is good because everybody gets to see that you can actually use sugar paste or rolled fondant in with the poppet as well, which I think is very useful. Which is kind of good. It is useful, yeah. Um, I've got a question from uh, Samar Fikri. She says, hi, Hello. can we make the donuts ahead and freeze them w without the decorations, of course? Oh, yeah, definitely. No reason why not. This will freeze absolutely fine. No problem at all. Yep, that would be absolutely great. So there we are, just the sugar paste over the top there. So this isn't quite as easy to remove. It's a little bit softer, but it does come out all the same. And like I say, because of where it's going to be going, I wasn't really too, too bothered. But there we go, that's come out really nicely. So we'll just do a, a few more of those. So we've got four to do in total. So again, you still need to keep it nice and thick. It needs to be as thick as the same depth as the poppet or else you won't get that indent on the inside. So there we go, just roll backwards and then forwards again. There we go, and smooth that round the edge in with our little scriber, that's the word I was thinking of, I couldn't get my words out there. And again, so that's the third one. And I've got a little, um, one of the little horns ready so that I can then spray that in blue, which is what I've done with this little chap here. And for his eye, I've just used a little black pearl. So they're there and Peter can just show you those as we're getting ready. And last one now. There we go. There we go, last one. And I've just used a, a blade tool, but you could use a leaf veining tool or whatever you need to, just to give you those little shapes that are just across on there. Entirely up to you. I think that was my tummy rumbling, actually. I think it was rumbling because I'm thinking I can either eat one of them lovely little frittata things or I can eat a rum barber or a donut. And I love donuts, I have to admit. They are my favourite. So I'm just smoothing that out just a little tiny bit. And I'm just going to use, this is the sharp end, or it's not a sharp end, it's the blade end of the blade tool. I'm just going to create a few little indents around what is our little fish. Give it a little tweak and a bend at the end, and that gives it a little bit of shape. So push all the way around there. Same thing around, give it another little twist, and that just gives you a little bit of shape going on there. I'll pinch the one that's going into the centre, but you'll find because it's really soft, it will just sit in there very nicely as it is. There we go. Just tidy up the edge a little bit. So, I mean, it still came out absolutely fine, as you can see. It's just that it's obviously a lot softer to work with when it's in sugar paste, but it's still absolutely fine. So now I'm just going to give him a, a little mouth and pop his little eyeball in as well. So I'll just give myself a, a little bit of a guide so that I know where I'm headed with that. Maybe just the end of the, the paintbrush will do the job. So that's a little eye going in there. And a little bit of glue just to keep it secured in there. So that's just a little bit of sugar glue. But if you've already got your uh, piping gel out, you could probably just use that instead. That will do the same job and a leaf veining tool, or you could use a cutting wheel just to give him a nice smiley face. There he goes in there. Oh, I didn't like that smiley face. Just gonna come in from that end. There we go, that's a bit better now. There we are, so he's looking quite happy there. And this is just gonna pinch and sit into there. Now it's still nice and soft, so I'm not gonna worry about gluing that in because it's the wet paste to the wet paste, so that looks quite nice turn him round for you. There you go, Peter. And I'm just going to place that one underneath there. I better use a bit of glue just in case, because it's on the underside of the donut, and that will be a little bit drier. So that can go just underneath there. 
Oh, I do need to do another one actually, don't I? One short. That can sit there. Just need to do one more little tail for him. And we've got some blue paste here left. So while Peter's just showing you him, I need to turn him round for you though, don't I? I've got him upside down. Oh, Pat's got a question. Sorry, Pat, I think you were getting a bit tired there. No, it's okay. Oh, okay. Um, I really just wanted um, you to remind everybody that the recipes will be going up later. Righty ho. Only some people joined part way through. Oh, okay, yes. So if you have joined us um, and you weren't lucky enough to get to the beginning for one reason or another, uh, Kieran, and it is Kieran, is going to be posting all of the recipes up at the very end so that they're all together. Uh, we have been talking through the recipes as we've been going along, but obviously you need to be able to see them with all the, the information on there when it comes to it. So don't worry, the recipes will all be coming up for you. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on there again. That should do the job, just underneath. Just put them together like so. And hopefully they will be stuck all okay. I'm going to have to lift all of this and put it into my, my little box here, aren't I? So while you're doing that, showing everybody, I'm just going to spray everything up together. And instead of having to re-lift these more than once, I'm going to pop them in there ready. And hopefully everything will lift. There we go. And there he goes. Okay, so that's that's him minus his little horn at the moment, which is going to be going on now. So I'm just going to glue that on, Peter, so as you know. A little bit of glue. So this one's already dried, and I'm just going to spray from the front. I'm just going to turn him around for a second. There we go. So, that, so he could be a swordfish or the narwhal. Or... For some reason, whenever I say that, I think I'm not saying it correctly. So I said to Kieran, is that how you say that? Because he's, he's young, obviously, so he's more trendy, I think, probably, than some of us older people. <laughs> right, so there we go. So we're just going to go over that little horn and all of him. Oh, I've put his eyeball in as well, so I'll clean his eyeball up in a minute. Don't worry about that. So if that's catching on the gun... Just check that I've got that on there correctly and you can see the lovely colour just coming up through there. And that just brings him in. I'm just going to tidy up his eye because I should have probably put that on last, which I didn't. That's okay. I'm just going to clean it up like so. There we are. That'll be fine then. To tidies it up. Looks all right, actually. I quite like it with a little bit of something on there because it looks like he's kind of looking back or staring, etc. So I'm just going to go over the blue a little bit more. Cover him over. There we go. Just to blend that in. And that's our little swordfish or narwhal. There he is. I'm not going to try and move him because he's still a little bit wet at the moment. But that's him done and dusted. So he's got a friend now. He's not on his own anymore. There's two of them. There they go, swimming away in the sea. Because apparently it's the unicorn of the sea, so I'm told. Because again, I don't know too much about these things. And that gum paste is here. So as you can see, it has already started to dry. So if you were kind of wondering, it's still got a little bit of bend, but it is a lot drier. The sugar paste, on the other hand, although it has begun to dry, we could actually screw that up into a ball and we could actually roll out with that again if we needed to. So you can see how much different that is to this. I can't do that with this. This has already, you can see, that will not re-roll back up. So at least it gives you a good idea on the drying times of those two as well. Poor old Pat, her arms are killing her. <laughs> She's got a question for everybody. Right. As long as it doesn't involve narwhals, I'm no, okay. It's just a case of sneaking this question in before, okay, before sounds we like say a good goodbye. Okay. Um, and this is uh, Judy Friesen, and she says, how much time do you have between decorating and service that is you know when people are going to um, eat them and how long do they keep is that we're talking the donuts, donuts. Um, 
Well, to be honest, it's like anything. If you, you need to keep it fresh, first of all, and covered over. But once it's got that covering on it, it will stay as fresh as it possibly can do. A lot will depend on your recipe um, and what butter you've put in there, for example, and how moist that is. I've used butter in here, so it does tend to keep it very moist for quite some time. But they're not massive, so you don't want to keep it for too long, to be honest. Um, but once they're cooled, cover and then serve, that's not a problem. But you've got a good two to three days on those, I would say, providing they're well coated. If you haven't put anything into the centre and that's exposed and the air's going to get to it, you know that's going to start drying out very quickly. So just kind of err on the side of caution. If, like the ladybird, you're covering right over the top, then that's sealing everything a lot more. A little bit of that gel or your jam on there, that will help keep it moist and fresh as well. So you should have a good two to three days, I think, on those. So I'm afraid that brings us to the end of what has been a really fun baking special. I've loved working with all of these tins, doing the frittatas, the doughnuts, and especially the rhubarbs because they're yummy. They take me back to my childhood and my nan when she used to always get me my rhubarb every weekend, I'm afraid. So we're going to have to try these in a minute, I think. Are you up for try? everybody up for trying some rhubarbs in a minute? Yeah. So we're going to be tucking into those and hopefully you'll be making some and tucking into yours as well. So thanks ever so much for joining us today from wherever you are in the world. And we look forward to seeing you next time. So thanks very much and bye for now.